My name is Patrick Feeney. In this lesson, we're going to talk about game programming software for the secondary classroom. Until recently, you needed very advanced coding skills to create digital games. But now, with visual interfaces and faster processors, almost anyone can be a video game creator. So more and more, people are choosing to make games as a means to learn programming, not the other way around. And as you know, there are even specific software tools designed for teaching kids to code through the process of making digital games. Today, we're going to talk about these tools. We'll give you a summary of the four leading products to use in schools, Kodu, Game Maker, Alice, and Greenfoot. And we'll compare and contrast them to help you determine which product might be right for your classroom. To help you differentiate between these tools, we'll consider the following criteria. Ease of use, target age group, target grade level, programming paradigm, availability on various platforms and various operating systems, and quality of the games produced. So let's get started. Kodu is a 3D game programming environment developed by Microsoft for Windows and Xbox for ages 9 to 14. It is entirely point and click. There is no text-based programming at all. It's a free product and yet has a very stylized interface with lots of attractive icons and a library of beautiful 3D models and environments for users to pick from. The important thing to know about Kodu is that the visual programming language it uses is a language specifically invented for this product, and it operates at a very high level of abstraction. The blocks used to control the assets in the game don't correspond to commands from standard programming languages at all, unlike, say, the blocks from Scratch or the commands from Alice and Greenfoot. By interacting with these blocks, students can explore computer science concepts, but they do not learn to code. However, teachers who use Kodu say that it provides an effective way to introduce students to notions that they will use later in their programming experience. And students also love it for the fantastically rich games that you can produce in no time at all. There are a few drawbacks. For one, you are limited to prepackaged assets, so you can't make a huge variety of games. Also, Kodu is known to require high-spec hardware. It does not work properly on low-cost machines and netbooks, for instance. Finally, you need a two-button mouse, or ideally, even a three-button mouse. I would recommend Kodu for students as young as 11 doing a pre-programming course or satisfying a multimedia requirement of a standard ICT curriculum. It is aimed at the same age group as Scratch, but it is less powerful. It is the least advanced among the tools profiled in this video, though certainly the most elegant. Game Maker. Now, Game Maker, like Kodu, is a point-and-click game creation tool appropriate for those with no programming experience. The latest version, Game Maker Studio, is free, but premium features allow you to actually deploy your game onto mobile platforms. Game Maker is designed to create 2D games, as opposed to Kodu, which is 3D. It's for Windows only, though an older version called Game Maker for Mac is still used by many people. The target age range for Game Maker is 12 to 18, which is slightly higher than Kodu, and this is obvious from the design of the product. In contrast to Kodu, the interface in Game Maker is quite utilitarian and even a bit spartan. A first time user will require a tutorial or the help of a teacher, though after that the learning curve will quickly flatten out because it's all point and click. Advanced users can inject text-based code in some places, however, so Game Maker ends up being quite a flexible product. It's easy enough for a 12-year-old to use, but advanced enough for upper-secondary students learning programming. But unlike Kodu, Alice, Greenfoot, and Scratch, Game Maker was not specifically designed to teach programming, so it's not easy to integrate into a programming curriculum. At the same time, it is a bit too much of a gamer-oriented tool to use outside of a programming context such as a general ICT course. For example, it comes with pre-coded variables for in-game health, in-game scores, and lives. These pure gaming aspects of Game Maker make it a bit alienating for those who aren't gamers themselves. However, non-gamers might well like the third product on our list, Alice. Alice is open source software on Windows, Mac, and Linux, developed by Carnegie Mellon University to help attract more students to programming, especially young girls. The latest version, Alice 3.0, contains stunning 3D assets from The Sims, the famous commercial game that is known to appeal to young girls. Alice reminds some people of Scratch because it is often used as a storytelling and animation tool rather than for making games proper. Also, like Scratch, 
Alice was designed to encourage problem solving and critical thinking. For instance, mathematics teachers can use Alice to do enrichment activities around 3D objects and 3D coordinate vectors. Although students as young as 12 can begin to use Alice, it is generally used for an older audience, advanced secondary, and even university students. Unlike Scratch, Kodu, and Game Maker, Alice uses more traditional syntax. Though you create programs in Alice by moving blocks of code with a mouse, the blocks have text written on them which looks like Java. Alice is in fact line by line similar to Java, and like Greenfoot, it was designed specifically to teach object-oriented programming. So Alice is certainly a lot more intimidating than using Scratch or Kodu, where the syntax has been reduced and simplified. It's also a 3D game world, so users will have to learn to control the camera, which determines the field of view, and worry about collision detection, which is objects interacting when they come in contact with each other. Some of these things are done for you automatically in Kodu, but not in Alice. Now on to Greenfoot. Greenfoot is free software developed by the University of Kent to teach Java in a fun and colorful way to students ages 14 plus. It is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. As a programming tool, it goes one step further than Alice and actually requires students to type real Java code. But it executes this code in a visual manner, using a game environment with worlds and actors instead of the Java classes and objects. As a game environment, it is quite unspectacular. Unlike Kodu and Game Maker, where the primary purpose is to build rich games, the game context in Greenfoot is there only to help students understand programming. It's kind of a metaphor for the lines of code, and it serves only as a means to an end, and the end is to learn Java. In terms of object-oriented programming, Greenfoot provides the main method, and a small class library that shields the user from the large set of Java APIs. So it makes it possible to get started programming in Java without having to build an application from scratch. Greenfoot also takes a bit more of a teacher role than other tools that we've looked at. It's unlike Scratch, which tries to get out of the way and lets students learn through experimentation. Even Alice is to an extent designed for learning through exploration and through play. Greenfoot, on the other hand, adds some layers of complication into the software on purpose. For instance, it has a compiler and a compile button, unlike Alice because the designers of Greenfoot felt that compiling is a key part of Java programming and wanted to leave that in. So Greenfoot is more formal than the other tools, and as a result, it is popular among teachers of first-year object-oriented programming courses. There's a big Greenfoot educational community and lots of resources available online. So it should be clear by now that there is something for everybody among these four free tools. The creators of Kodu, Game Maker, Alice, and Greenfoot have all made different design choices to best serve their intended audience. For example, which underlying programming concepts to reveal and which to conceal, and how much emphasis to put on designing good games versus learning to code. A lot of these choices involve a trade-off, so none of these systems is perfect or complete, but there is enough variety that every teacher should be able to find what they are looking for. One of the most important criteria in any decision to implement new software is the appropriateness for the age and the ability of the students. So here's a graph that recaps the target age group for the four products that we've profiled. A logical progression, assuming you were going to implement all of these tools sequentially, would be Kodu or Game Maker, to Alice, to Greenfoot. But as we've mentioned, some of these tools, Alice for example, have a wide age range and could, in theory, serve the needs of a younger classroom. In the end, of course, any decision depends on a school's specific needs. So it's an individual decision, but we hope that we've given you at least a good general overview.